Hey everybody, welcome uh, to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Joseph Puckett, and I'm joined today uh, by Charles Plott, who I'm gonna introduce in a moment, and Craig Wiggins. So thank you guys for joining us to talk about staffing, building your team, managing your team, motivating your team, all those things. Welcome to today's call. Um, now before we get started, I wanna go over some housekeeping. We welcome your questions, and I would prefer that you use the Q&A function. So down at the bottom of your Zoom, instead of the chat, click on the Q&A. That way I can moderate those a little bit easier instead of just the general chat. But please, as Charles is presenting, as Craig's presenting, ask your questions, and we will moderate those towards the end or throughout as necessary. I'll be keeping an eye on the questions. Now we are recording this call for playback and for those of you that are in CWC on demand or other programs, I'll have this on the platform by this afternoon or tomorrow at the latest. So if you need to catch a replay or something or show this to your manager or something, that's fine. We are recording this for our own internal purposes. Um, but with that said, I would like to kind of kick things off and pull up my presentation here. Uh, give me one second. I want to share my PowerPoint. <clears throat> and share this with you guys. All right, give me a quick chat just to let me know. Can you see the slide that says the world Charles plot on it? I just wanna make sure that we're good. Send me a quick chat. All right, good, good, thank you guys. So I wanna introduce you to a friend. Charles and I met uh, probably eight or nine months ago or so um, as a referral. Craig and I started working with him and started thinking about how we could help agencies with their teams. Charles is a performance consultant, a director of organizational performance at White Space, in a, White Space Innovations here in Huntsville. He has over 30,000 hours of counseling and coaching experience. Can you imagine that? 30,000 hours. And that includes family counseling, marital counseling, business counseling and consulting. So tons of experience. I'm so glad that I met him and we started talking about how we might be able to help agencies. Um, Charles has worked with you know big companies, Fortune 500 companies, professional and amateur athletes, right? I'm your newest athlete. Uh -oh. I'm an amazing <laughs> ping pong player. I can <laughs> ping pong it. So I'm your newest athlete. You can put me on your resume. Okay. Uh, executives and business owners, collegiate sports teams, and also other people, right? Big businesses, small businesses, and others. Um, he's also been a personal consultant to the 2008 Ryder Cup captain. Um, he's an author. He loves sports talk, sports talk yeah. radio. Um, and he's a guest columnist for several publications. And Charles is a master certified consultant for the Judgment Index. So let me stop uh, my, my presentation here and kind of pull it back up and pass it to Craig Wiggins to talk a little bit more about this journey. Yeah, so look, we've done a lot of content for you guys on staffing, you know, and I think a lot of you have, have done a really good job with your talk pass, and, you know, comp plans, and, and working with your people to execute on the things that we've taught you know, over the last couple of years. Um, but what I think is missing or what has been missing is the ability to, to get into that leadership role and work on the psyche of the people that you have working for you, working with you, and the people that you're that you're interviewing and talking to, and I think you know this is where Charles is going to come in. We about a year ago, it was almost a year ago. You know, we started looking for something that would fill that gap, right? And not a personality assessment or something like that, which just labels people, but something that truly gave you as an owner or leader a tool where you could work with these people and understand what makes them click. And as we started to look around, you know, we started talking with Charles a little bit and, and did some research on what they were doing. And what was really interesting is you know, everybody I think knows I'm a big Alabama fan. And this was kind of the selling point for me. But I found out that Nick Saban is using this company with his team. And whether you love him or hate him, it's hard to argue with the success that he's had. You know, Nick Saban has done an amazing job uh, with his team and motivating them and finding out with all those different players on the team, what makes them click and how he can talk to this guy and how he needs to treat this guy and, you know, how to get the most out of them and reach their full potential. So that was a huge thing for me to hear that. And, and I've learned since then that now Tennessee is using it, the basketball team in Alabama is using it. I, I think it would be, be very difficult to argue that Alabama's had a significant edge over the last decade uh, with, with their competitors. And a lot of that is because he invests so much time in getting into the, the minds of his players. So that was a huge part of it. The other thing was we found out that this company was also working with Chick-fil-A. 
which I think is a, an industry leader, yeah. right? Within their space, they do it better than anybody else. Their employees are amazing. You know, the, the, what they deliver from a customer experience perspective is, is just top notch. Um, so to learn that these two organizations that I just have a lot of respect for, and I think a lot of people do, um, are using this particular company to help not only with evaluating talent coming in, but how to work with their people and how to develop and coach. Um, to me, that was just huge. The, the problem we had was there wasn't anything for our space, for the insurance space. So we got with Charles and decided, hey, you know what, what we're going to do is we're going to build a coaching index for the insurance industry. So over the last eight or nine months, that's what we've been doing. We've worked with, with staff and owners, managers all across the country in a lot of different roles and have worked really close to design something so that you as an owner, a leader, manager within that, that organization has a tool to help you work with your team, you know, to find out what motivates them and what priorities they have, what, what, what stresses them out, what they respond to, you know, how they look at things favorably, unfavorably, when you're building your comp plans, your promotions, the way you hold them accountable, all the different things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. This the mental side of that I think has been missing for a lot of people. Some people are just, great leaders, right? And can look at somebody and maybe a group of people and they can figure out, okay, this is what I need to do here or there and, 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 and handle it the right way and have a lot of success with it. That's not true for most people though. Most people need some help with that, you know, and, and to go out and have a shrink on staff to help you with that, that's, <laughs> that's not really a reasonable solution. So that's what we did. We got with Charles, like, look, let's create something that could be used. It could also be tweaked going forward the more and more this is used, the better and better it's going to get. And it's been amazing over the last several months since we've used it in-house um, and with people that we knew and knew that they were having issues in their life and how this was able to pick up on those things and point out to us that, hey, you need to know this about that person. And maybe not the exact specific thing, right. but just an indicator that this is how you need to deal with that person. Um, to get the most out of them, to get them to reach their full potential. So we're really excited about this. I think it's going to be a game changer, not only when you're interviewing and you're hiring and trying to figure out who's going to come in, um, but also with your team and how they evolve. You know, we all have, whether you have three people or 35 people, you got different personalities. You have different people that respond to things differently. And knowing what you need to be doing with those folks to get the most out of them for your agency and for them, that's a huge advantage. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is, is how you can do that and what role, you know, Charles and his company play in, in what we're doing to try to deliver this to you guys. Um, so we're really, really excited about it. So I'll let Charles kind of go through um, the way this works. And then of course, at the end, like Justin said, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Thank you so much. Uh, I sit back and I listen and what comes to my mind as you're talking is my experience, and as Joseph alluded to, starting out as marriage and family counseling, I got into working with athletes and I'm coaching them. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is how do you get the best performance out of an athlete? Uh, some of you are golfers and know what the Ryder Cup is. It's a really intense battle between US players and European players. And the captain of the U.S. team asked me to come on board, help him put players together. But, you know, it was so interesting as you were describing it. He wanted a cheat sheet that if it's going great with this guy, what do I say to him? And if you're really not playing well today, what do I say to him? Right. And it was really funny because you had guys that if they were having a bad day, it's like, coach, you need to put your arm around him and go, let, let you know, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. And, and he had one guy on the team had started awful. And he looked at his cheat sheet and it said, challenge his masculinity, you know, <laughs> and he did, he went up on, you know, and he goes, man, everything inside me wanted to hug him. And the truth was I need to kick him in the butt. And that's what we hope to bring to you is that everyday practicality of, I know and understand my people and I know what to say and do. And uh, one of the great, things that you'll discover here in just a few minutes, we even give you frustration points. What is going to drive this person nuts? Um, now you could use that against them, I guess, in a weird way, but, but you know, if I know what helps them succeed, but I also know what will cause frustration on their part, 
that gives me great insight. If I'm coaching them, what works for one person doesn't work for another. And uh, sadly, in sports psychology, so much of it is, well, here's a canned approach. Everybody does this one thing. Mine has been for 20 years. You know, your mental game, my mental game, Craig's mental game are all going to be unique to us as individuals. And that's our approach in creating this coaching index. Well, let's dive into the yeah. presentation and talk about the difference between personality and judgment. Oh, this is my favorite. <clears throat> So uh, as you can see on the screen, I came out of marriage and family counseling and everybody was doing a Myers-Briggs, a DISC, and then now years later, there's a dozen more knockoffs of those. And I was using that with my athletes and it, there's some real usefulness in that. Uh, and then in the course of working with an athlete, I ran across a kid who wanted me to work with him and his dad was involved in the judgment index. And it's kind of funny. I wanted my I wanted the, my new client to take my assessment, and that was a personality assessment. And the dad texted me and said, "I'll let my son take your assessment if you'll take my assessment." <laughs> and it was the judgment index. And and one of the things that that really hit me. Point number two under personality. Personality is not a predictor of success. And I know. Craig's got stories about that. I know you probably have stories. Just because somebody has a certain personality does not mean they're going to be successful. Judgment is much more tied to success and failure. And so, and, and there's a lot of other things. For instance, you don't do a personality assessment on Craig and then go up to him and go, and we can fix that. You don't talk about personality in that way, yet judgment Odds are football season is going to crank up and some of you are fans and you're going to be throwing things at your TV screen because your quarterback <laughs> just made a bad decision. Um, good judgment is fluid. It's not like personality that stays kind of fixed. It's trainable. I use the example all the time of my brother being a real estate agent and a real estate appraiser. I know nothing about that. If I were to spend two weeks in the car with him, I would know so much my judgment would have improved. Personality, like I said, is relatively unchanging. You definitely don't come up to somebody and go, we're going to fix it or we're going to, you know, tweak it or whatever. So, you know, personality is good for kind of understanding how a team comes together. Judgment is so much more crucial to you building a strong team. As you start looking at the roles, and we did that in our creation of this assessment, we're looking at traits that are directly transferable to your employee performing better. And judgment isn't really good or bad, but I need to know, for instance, you know, if, if you wanted to be a quarterback on a football team, you better make snap decisions. I'm not sure I want an advisor, someone playing an advisory role in your office to be making just knee-jerk reactions. You want people who consider what's going on, who work their way through a process, who consider all the different aspects, because insurance is complicated. I mean, not just, it is, because everybody's needs are unique. One of the things about personality is it doesn't really distinguish, and you hit on it just a minute ago, it doesn't distinguish between my work life and my personal life. The assessment, and, and the coaching index is actually going to give you indicators of is somebody struggling in their personal life? We'll not tell you what it is, but if their personal life is creating a lot of stress for them, <clears throat> you and I know that may not show up today at work. It may not show up this week at work, but in the next days or weeks to come, it's going to, it's going to bleed over. And you need to be able to know that even on your existing employees, and I think you all will have a blast with this, is that you'll know somebody's going through a stressful time. They know it. And when you see these results and it shows that their stress is high, you all are all going to go, yeah, absolutely. Um, another thing that is wonderful about our index is that, that you can use it on an annual basis and reassess your folks. Uh, you can target areas for improvement and be able to come back a year later and go, wow, they really did improve in that area. Mm -hmm. That's where this was a home run with Craig because 
He wants to coach. He doesn't want to give you just a thumbs up, thumbs down sort of thing. We want you to realize your people are fluid, they are trainable, and this gives you insight into doing that training. So how about we talk a little bit about, you know, how we customized what's been around for a long time, right. but customized it particularly to help these agencies bring on better people and motivate and develop their existing team members. The, the root of this is in the judgment index, and it's going to give almost 50 indicators. We picked 11. And, and they are very critical indicators related to performance. We took those 11 and broke them up into four categories. Does this individual have good general judgment? We can go into more of that detail in a little bit. Are they coachable? There are certain components of judgment that indicates coachability. One of them is, is called problem solving energy. If I don't have the energy to solve things or to take on new information, I'm not gonna be coachable. We can give you that. We look at reliability. There are certain factors in judgment that indicate whether somebody's going to be reliable. Can you depend on them on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis? And then we look at a really neat component, which is drive. Is this person, do they have the personal resources, emotionally, mentally, to go after something and get it? We can, we can interview, and you all have done it, Somebody will blow you away in an interview and be an absolute dud. We did this long before the coaching index came along with an insurance company. And he had a guy who killed it on all the things that, that their, their company did. I won't name names of the assessments and was just a dud. Didn't sell a thing in six months. We, we took the judgment index, looked at him, and said, you know, this person is perfectly suited to be kind of a customer service representative. They put him in charge of touching base with all of their business clients on a monthly basis, taking donuts, and he just built relationships. He had come back and go, you know, so-and-so's grandmother's dying or this and such happened, gave the agent tremendous information that allowed them to connect with their with their clients and we put him in the right place and he just thrived and and did so much to retain business and started bringing in business by not being a salesperson, but by being a relationship person. And it's just one of the many success stories we have of getting the right people doing the right thing. And and what do they have a drive to do? And just to reiterate, a sample of LSPs took so the index. There's over a hundred LSPs mm-hmm. from across the country. So what we did, I'm, I'm sorry, I left that out. What we did was we, we took this and we gave it to folks who are doing the job right mm-hmm. now. And we could, we then, we tweaked our scales and our, our thresholds for things so that it reflects folks who are successful. We're not trying to weed out everybody. We actually want it to be a pretty good sized pool of people that, that score well on this because we're going to give you the tools to coach them, mm-hmm. to put them in the right places. Um, and there's a lot of folks, that, one of the things that comes up, and I need to mention it because I know it's not directly on one of the slides, is that people with super, super strong judgment may not fit in a certain setting. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want somebody with the judgment of a brain surgeon doing you know, certain types of work because they'll become very frustrated with it. So we help you identify people who may be so strong that you need to look at this and go, man, I can put a lot on that person's plate. You know, maybe I need to look at them as a future leader in this, in this organization. So we can give you that. We can give you both top end and bottom end sort of considerations so that you don't put you don't set people up to fail. And just continuing on, you know, the report, which we're going to look at an example in mm-hmm. a moment. Let's talk about how, you know, what the objective is. This isn't a pass fail to hire or fire somebody. You know, what's the objective of the CABC coaching index? Well, first of all, it, it, it is based on successful folks. That's what we went out and looked at. And, and so we're not looking at people who have failed or, or whatever. We're looking at people who are doing the job. 
And then we had folks kind of rank how those individuals were and set up our scales that way. You know, people want to think of using this in a hiring process. I think, you know, long term, the greatest benefit of this are on your current employees and those new hires that stay with you because it is a coaching index. It's not a hiring index, it's a coaching index. So, so much of this was thought out ahead of time that you look at so many things out there, oh, I used it to hire them. I mean, what I want you doing is being able to come back to this six months from now and going, you know, this is absolutely right, but I, I haven't been aware of how frustrated this person is and it's exactly what it says is going to frustrate them. And I'll just take off the PowerPoint for a minute because I'll pass it to Craig. You know, y'all may not know this, but this guy failed all states assessment. <laughs> right? You talk about that for a Twice. minute. Yeah. Talk about that. I felt, look, I, I've never been a big fan. <clears throat> of labeling anybody anything because I, I, I scored no potential twice when I came to Allstate and had to get somebody to, you know, override all that just to give me an opportunity. So I've never been a real big fan. And several years ago, we did use personality assessments for, for three years and just found no track record, no consistency, nothing that was like, okay, if we follow this, this is going to happen. So that was really out. I wasn't interested in anything like that. What I wanted was something like what Charles is talking about, where you can determine someone's judgment and the coachability. And like when you hire somebody, you bring them in, right? And a lot of people, they think this is all about, let's just, let's save somebody some money and we'll get them to switch over. And then you bring them in and you're talking about, you know, value selling and getting away from price and stopping to look at what they're paying now. And that, that requires some buy-in. It probably requires some buy-in from the people you have now. So knowing that this person's going to be a better fit for that role is a huge advantage for you, mm -hmm. much more so than being labeled as a salesperson or a service person, which doesn't really mean anything. Let's, let's yeah. look at what's more internal in terms of what they're going to be like when they come on board in terms of our ability to coach them. And, and are they going to buy into what we're going to be saying, or is this going to be just a constant battle? And then what are the things that frustrate them? You know, so we built so many different things into this, uh, to help you not only with, with new hires, I think it will be a help for new hires when you're evaluating talent, but going forward because your team evolved. You know, we got people here who've been here over, over 10 years, right? Five years. And the amount of change they have, even in a 12 month period of time, is significant. When you're talking about two, three, four, five, 10 years, you need to know what's going on with that person and how you need to deal with them. And frankly, that, that's what stood out so much to me with, at Alabama, at Chick-fil-A, is that that's the way they're utilizing this tool. It's not a pass-fail to hire somebody. It's what do we do to get these people to perform at the best possible point? You know, how do we get them to reach their full potential? How do we treat them? Now, we're going to treat everybody fair, but we're going to treat people differently based on what they respond to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's smart. We, we do that here, you know, and, and this will just enable you to – to maybe take that to another level, which may be missing now, whether it's, whether it's you, your leadership, you know, the people that you're working with that are working with your team, you know, they may not know how to do a lot of that. And by having very specific things, which I can just remember going through with so many of our teams, like, yep, that's exactly right. And that's something we struggle with for a long time with that particular person. Once we figured that out, it changed everything, it changed the way we built our promotions, the comp plan, the way you talk to them. So, I just think this is a totally different type of tool. It's not an assessment at all. It's an index of what you're really dealing with and will give you some insight as to how you need to deal with that person, you know, to get the most out of them. And that's what I like about it so much. Well, let's talk a bit about the mechanics of how the index works. Maybe look at an example and thank you to Liz for the question. Uh, fantastic question. Go ahead and submit your questions through the Q and a, because we only have about, five to 10 more minutes left of presentation, then we want to address your questions yep. about staffing, motivating your team, developing your team, hiring, anything. This is your time and we want to make the most use of it. But let's talk for a moment about taking the CWC index from like the end user perspective. So uh, folks are going to sign up on, online and they, within about uh, 24 to 48 hours, you'll receive a unique pin code and a link so that you can go do this that works for everybody in your office, that becomes your little code. This is such a unique thing. You're gonna take it and go, this is not like anything I've taken before. Mm -hmm. You're gonna rank order items. And it will be things like a wedding ring, a pile <laughs> of trash, 
a terrorist act, you know, and you rank order these, it on average, I, they shared with us the other day, the average in the past year is about 13 minutes and 20 seconds to take it. And so to do everything to fill out the stuff, I mean, you're looking only at about 15 to 20 minutes. The, uh, once they take it, uh, the agency owner or whoever has permission to look at it, that's available immediately. So you could literally, in, in a hiring situation, bring somebody in, go mm -hmm. through the process, go, I want them to take it. They take it, and, and you're going to know. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be able to look at that. All the information you need to know about this index, we give you in written material, in written form, and also in video form on the website. Uh, and then there will be a database so that you can go back and look. And I think one of the really unique things, you may have some two or three people come in looking for a position, you're hiring one. And in doing this, you identify a great hire, you just don't have a place for them. Two weeks later, somebody's you know left, mm -hmm. you can go back in this database and go, now who was that and why mm -hmm. was it? And, and so you have a database available to you. And I want to jump in on that, too, because, listen, folks, just when you're fully staffed, you won't be. <laughs> you won't be. Someone's going to move. They're going to retire. They're going to decide to do something else. They, you know, things happen, right? Life happens. Death happens. So, or what if you want to expand? What if there's an agent, you know, two miles down the street that's ready to sell, but he or she's been running the agency by themselves for 15 years and you need two or three people. So having that database of recruits yeah. and candidates to be able just to go through and say, you know, I remember that person. They made an impact on me at the moment. We didn't have a spot, but now we do. Now you have a bench of players. You can bring up the, your, your dugout and say, Hey, I'm calling you in. Yep. Right. It's time to come on, come on back in for another conversation. I like that having a database. Oh, but it's you. So what's, can we look at an example report? Mm -hmm. All right. Let me get my, presentation pulled up here and take a look at an example so this is a uh, the summary why don't you kind of walk through um, and you know hopefully everybody can see this but don't worry um, we have some more information on our website which I'll show you in a minute but can you kind of walk us through well as, as you can see right at the top uh, we have the general judgment and, and one of the things that that this index looks at do they have strong people skills? Do they make good decisions as it relates to relationships? You also have a valuing of task accomplishment. So I think of the, these as being like a lens you look at something through. I'm going to look at something and I start big picture judgment is my strongest suit. Well, on this, if you were to look at mine on here, you're going to see picture judgment and preferred. You're going to see people judgment and preferred. And task judgment and accomplishment is going to be in the moderate range. So if you're looking at somebody to push paper and fill out forms and get things done, I'm not your person. <laughs> now, am I going to be able to go out and meet an individual or have them come into the office and me quickly grasp where they are in life and what sort of things and build a relationship? but I'm not going to be as efficient as at filling out forms. You'll be able to know that. That's what general judgment looks at. Coachability, this ability to, to notice. This is incredibly important when it comes to learning mm -hmm. is how many times do they have to see something? Now I'm going to brag on one of my kids. His boss told me the other day, he said, you know, we're putting Brian in a different place because you only have to show him once. Isn't that nice? Isn't that yeah. nice? You know, it just makes a dad feel awesome. Well, you, you take that ability to notice and pick up on things along with an energy for learning, this, this problem-solving energy, and you've got a coachable individual. I mean, it just makes sense. That's what we want in this. This has just got to make sense to you. Then we start looking at reliability. How much value does this individual place on work? Do they have morale? How, how strong is their work morale? How about their personal stress level? This is, this is one of those indicators that we, we had some folks pop up with you mm -hmm. that were some of your top performers, but they, they showed up as weak yep. in this area. And you turned around to me and said, man, that person went through a divorce. Yep. This person's going through that. It absolutely picked up on it. And as you use it, you'll develop that, that sense of when I see something there, do I need to just be aware of it? 
their work side stress. This is where we look at both what work creates in them and their personal life, literally from the judgment index side. This is, do they have a positive attitude? All of us have stress. Mm -hmm. Do I view that as a positive thing or as a negative thing? And I, I, I always remember when my child was born and we suddenly had to work in the nursery at church on Sunday. And I had to change a stinky diaper from another kid other than mine. I had a whole different opinion of that experience than if it had been my kid. <laughs> you know, my stress level went up. And, but it is, it's, how, it's the label you put on it. And, and that's what this gets at. Does this individual handle stress well? Mm -hmm. Then we look at drive, their total problem solving ability. That is directly related to drive. If somebody's a good problem solver, they're ready to take on a task. Then we look at their work-life balance. This is one of those more subtle things that influences their drive. They could start out great with you, but if I'm, if I'm looking at hiring the person or coaching the person in my business that, that has this report, I would be worried that long-term, if this work-life balance, you may know, hey, you know, Craig's grandmother is dying and he's having to take care of him. And right now your work-life balance is just mm -hmm. all haywire. Mm -hmm. I know that's a temporary thing, but it just gives you as an, as an owner or manager that insight into, okay, I know there's something going on here. Another one is self-criticism. This is a very, very customized scale because People who aren't critical of themselves don't achieve highly. They're too easy on themselves. People who are too hard on themselves don't achieve highly because they get tired. And so this scale really looks at that proper balance of self-criticism. Do they, are they hard enough on themselves that they, that they produce good work, but they're not so hard that they beat themselves up. And the truth is you and I know this, if they beat themselves up, it's just come in sooner or later, I'm going to start doing it to you. Mm -hmm. And what I like is down here, yeah. oh, the coaching that, point. That's mm -hmm. the best part of the mm -hmm. whole thing because instead mm -hmm. of just getting a label, now mm -hmm. you're actually getting coaching points and primary sources of frustration. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that a little bit. You know, how does that work into this overall evaluation? Or well, um, this judgment type that you see comes mm -hmm. out of a more s sensitive measure than just preferred up here under people tasked and big picture. It looks at the very minute relationships between those. And this individual is really strong at developing people. And what I know that's going on there is both number one and number two are tied. And, and that, that's a somewhat unique, not very unique, but somewhat unique uh, personality or judgment type. And this gives uh, coaching points and, and frustration points directly related to that so that you can look at it and you would you would imagine immediately just by that title this is going to be somebody who isn't just going to do good work for your your folks coming in wanting to make changes in their policies and all that they're going to encourage and help those in the office mm -hmm. this is this is a great team player right yeah, and if you look at the coaching points or look how specific that is about what you need to do and how you need to work with that person you know, probably support and encourage their ability to bring mm -hmm. the best out of others. But that, like that bottom one on, on the coaching point, make sure the rewards are meaningful. Financial may not drive the motivation. Those wow. are really good things to know Definitely. when you're trying to get the most out of somebody, whether it's building a promotion, holding them accountable, sitting down and doing a one-on-one -on -one with them, and maybe going over a phone call or a certain situation where they've got some improvement to make. Having these key things from a coaching perspective um, that's critical. And being yeah. able to pull that out of this index and then use that and leverage that within your team, that's a huge advantage for you. And, and we wanted to make it just that simple. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I love about this thing. It, it, it really gets into a, ma a manageable level for them. We have key measures. This is nothing but a, a verbal written out explanation of each of the scales. Mm -hmm. you know, you I'm not explained, uh, which mm -hmm. I just kind of right. explained. Mm -hmm. right. And this will come through on the report. Right. So it'll be an email and in their database. Absolutely. And there's there's 13 different judgment types. Correct. We're not going to talk about all of them, but on our website, we actually put 
all of them. So if you're <laughs> curious, you know, maybe you can kind of look through the 13 and think, oh, I wonder which one I am. Um, and so th this is just an example of what comes with the report mm -hmm. of your team member or recruit. Right. right. And, and right. this is different than the one we just saw. This is not mm -hmm. uh, the developing people. This is one that is listening, sensing. It's called type six. And you can read the very specific things. These will match right up with those coaching points and those frustration points. But it will give you exactly an insight into how this individual looks at a situation. Like I said, it's like a lens that they look through. This person immediately is going to think of people first, then tasks, then the big picture. That's mm -hmm. what's characteristic of type six. So we've got some training available for those that want to make the CWC coaching index a part of their agency. Um, so when it comes to the training, you guys know we like videos, right? <laughs> we love videos. The, the CWC on the man platform just passed eight, hundred videos wow so we love videos so you know we've got some video training you also get the reports that are very easy to understand uh, support is also available and we're gonna be doing some webinars and somebody just joked Craig how did you get dr. Phil to present you're big time now <laughs> so, just, so you're gonna have webinars opportunities with dr. Phil to talk about all kinds of things performance evaluation motivating your team all of those uh, resources will be available to CFBC Coaching Index users. And then also there's going to be the opportunity as time goes on down the road for more in-depth insight at various levels um, to leverage um, Phil and, excuse me, Charles, and this program, <laughs> Dr. Phil, Charles, Plot, and the CWC Index. And I just wanted to kind of take over for just a moment. And guys, please submit your questions. We've already got several here to talk about if you wanted to make this a part of your, of, of your agency, what does that look like? Okay, so when it comes to your people, when it comes to your people, they're your biggest asset and also biggest pain in the rear sometimes, right? Motivating your team, fit, finding out what makes them tick, getting them to reach their full potential. We truly believe that the CWC Coaching Index can be a big part of that. It's 99 bucks a month. That's it, 99 bucks a month for unlimited assessments. Someone asked a minute ago, uh, Melissa French said, how long does the assessment take? Can agents take it and see how it works? Yes, Melissa, you can take it. Your existing team can take it. As many candidates as you want. There's no per assessment fee. There's others out there that give you like 15 assessments or 20 assessments or a three month contract or a year contract. There's no contracts. There's no commitments. Unlimited assessments, unlimited database, all the resources that you need for 99 bucks a month. But by the way, if you notice, if you're currently with CWC, like in on-demand coaching or mentoring levels, it's 59. It's only $59 a month. And you can learn more at craigwigginscoaching.com slash CWC index. And if I could just for a moment, <clears throat> I want to briefly share uh, my website real quick with you guys or our website real quick with you guys. So here you guys can see CWC coaching index. There's a quick video here with Charles and Craig explaining more about it. Um, here's the enrollment. If you're currently in CWC, it's $59 per month. If you're not, that's fine. For $100 a month, I think that's a wonderful investment to have unlimited insight into your team. You want to look at the 13 different indexes? Here they are. You can actually click on these and read through what the 13 different judgment types are. And keep scrolling down on our website here. Here's all kinds of short videos. These range anywhere from three minutes to seven minutes or so on understanding how these work, how to interpret the results, how to interpret what each of the 13 judgment types are. Look at, look at all these Charles's, um, all the different faces of Charles. Right? I was gonna say that, that, um, but all these videos are right here on our website. You don't have to pay extra for all this additional training or things. It's all here at your fingertips. So craigwigginscoaching.com slash CWC index and just choose your level. For current members, it's 59. For those that are not, it's only $99 a month. Absolutely, you know, we wanted to bring something new that was very affordable. Um, that you could make just a part of your overall process, you know, as far as when you're, when you're coaching, when you're developing and working with your team and something that's just ongoing. Um, but we didn't put a contract to it. It's nope. month to month. If you get involved, you don't find any value in it. No problem at all. Again, we I think you guys know us well enough. We're, we're truly trying to help you and your team get better and bring things to you that make sense. Um, they're reasonably priced. It all works out for you. Um, and something that, that is truly going to work. 
And I think that's the biggest difference between this and everything else I've ever looked at is that it's not this vague description or label of somebody that you really don't know what to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, okay, well that, that means what nobody can really tell you. This goes into a lot of detail of exactly what that means, but more importantly, it gives you the coaching points on what you need to do with that person. There are mm -hmm. some people that when you talk to them, like when we do our one-on-ones here and Joseph found this out early on, you know, several years ago, there's certain ways you can handle a bad phone call with one person that will completely bomb with another person. Yeah. And you got to know what that is. And yeah. if you don't know, at least in some general sense of what your plan is going to be when you go in there to work with them, it can be counterproductive. So having that information at your fingertips is just huge, not only when you're hiring, but as you're going forth and then being able to identify, like he said, and we use it on some of our own people here and it pinpointed that there was things going on in their life that you, then you as a leader can address and deal with that. That's, it's hard to put a price on that. Yeah, that's yeah. a phenomenal thing to be able to work with your team. And it really will make you a so much better leader, you know, in the eyes of the people that work with you. Um, but you're going to get a lot better results because you're going to know how to deal with those folks. So that's, we're really excited about this and glad to have Charles on our team. And he is a part of our team. He's, he's one of our partners. Now we will, you'll be seeing a lot more of him on a regular basis through webinars. And, and like Joseph said, we're going to do other things, hopefully in the future with, you know, workshops and that type of thing right. to try to even get a deeper dive into what's going on in your agency. Because I do think this is the missing link for a lot of agencies where they've got processes in place got talk paths and know how to overcome objections, all these different things, but then learning how to actually lead people, yeah. but how those people respond to the way you deal with them, that a lot of times is the missing link and something that anybody, you know, can get a lot better from just by having that advantage. So we're really excited to have you on board. Hope you guys get involved. I think it will help you tremendously as you go forward. Not, again, not only with hiring, but with that constant development and trying to get your people to reach your full potential. Uh, Monica and David both asked when y'all could get started today. This has been months and months and months of work. <laughs> Can you believe it? We're finally here. We are so nitpicky. Craig and I are crazy nitpicky, and these guys went above and beyond to create something unique for us. So Monica, David, others, and actually someone just enrolled. I saw the email. You can get started today, okay? So we'd love to work with you guys. Um, uh, Sean Odo, what's up, Sean? What's up, asked, Sean? How often should you have your team members take and retake this index? Is it annually, six months? You know, great question. If you're if you've done this and you have somebody take it and you've targeted an area for improvement, and that's something we'll cover in these webinars. Mm -hmm. What are the protocols? Every single scale on here has a research protocol of how you can improve. So you could have them take it you engage in some activities that should improve it, you can do that about every six months. I recommend people definitely annually take it. But if you're working on a, a specific area, you want to improve noticing capacity. There are exercises, there are ways to do that. You could do that, come back six months later and go, is my number, do I have a change in that? And we can give you that specific information. And I'll add this too, when you have somebody that may be Maybe something's changed, right? In their personality, the way they interact in meetings, the production, just kind of the vibe that they have, that would be a good time to let them take it because it will pick up on things that will give you some cues on maybe what's going on that you don't know. Maybe they're not willing to talk about, but it comes through on the index and now you can address that and you can deal with that in whatever way and using the coaching tips that come through well, uh, with the index. Well, when I the very first time I took it, uh, I was going through a custody battle and the results really showed it. My, my values, I was totally involved in the people and the work that needed to be done and big picture was gone. Mm. And people said, man, that's not you. Six months later, uh, that resolved in a very positive fashion. I retook it and suddenly I was big picture dominant, people next, them working tasks. It, is, it, it really does reflect what's going on in your life. And as Craig said, if you've got somebody and all of a sudden, you know, you've done this and you're three or four months down the road and Susie or Bobby or whoever it is, isn't quite themselves, you feel free to have them take it again. That's not too close to get. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Um, Lee says, I can see this as a coaching tool to use to monitor staff going forward, not just the initial hiring process phase. I'm really glad that you picked up on that, Lee. Um, thank you. Um, let's see here. Um, should you, Maria asked, should you match personality? Sh excuse me. Should you match to your personality mm -hmm. or do you match to the job? So as you're reading through this judgment next, do you maybe consider how you will interact with them? Well, I think really an insightful question, mm -hmm. which I think would be covered really great in a webinar uh, in the future to get into that. One of the things that you'll find is that there is some overlap between personality. And I'll tell you this, and we hadn't even discussed it. I mean, I can help take what information you do have and even lay this on top of that and, and be able to, to help you understand your people. But, you know, a lot of people's personality at work changes and, and uh, you, you think of all the different hats you wear. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a really positive and encouraging person. I had a child that you just had to treat brutally honest. Mm -hmm. And so I come home one day and my wife's like, you know, he's in the bedroom. Here's his report card. And I went in there and I was one mean dude, you know, and I walked back out. My wife goes, how'd it go? And I go, man, I was great in there. You know? <laughs> so I think judgment plays through those things much more than personality does. Mm -hmm. and, and we can help you grow in your understanding of that. That's not a question I'd answer just right off the I would add to it, though. I think that as you go through this and you start to see these results, you'll find some things that will probably complement your leadership style. You know, me and Joseph, you know, we, we're like brothers and we get along great, but we're very different with a lot of the yeah, way we absolutely. handle things. They are. And, it, and it comes through very clear with this. So there's a lot of times where it's good to have somebody that has complementary skills um, mm -hmm. or, or the way they handle things versus the way you do. If you have somebody that's exactly like you, a lot of times that, that can actually be a problem. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you as you go through this, when you're looking for someone that's in that leadership role that's going to work side, side by side with you, to look at someone who complements your strengths not necessarily duplicates that. Um, and then diff on the different roles, it just depends, you know? So I think you'll, you'll understand that a lot more once you start seeing the results and the way this comes back. And it'll be really interesting for you when you do it with your own team, yeah. because you're going to see a lot of things that maybe you kind of felt, Hey, there was an underlying thing that, but you just weren't sure about. And this family just pops up. And look, I'm not saying this is a hundred percent accurate by any means. I can just tell you that, over the last several months, you know, using it with our people and people that we had a good relationship with, it was just amazing how it did pick up on so many different things mm -hmm. that would have been so helpful to know earlier on mm -hmm. to deal with that, you know? So when you're hiring, I think that's what you need to do. Look for things that complement you, you know, and not necessarily duplicate what you, what you're all about. And I think that's one reason why Justin and I work so well together is because you know, where I'm weak, he can be strong and vice versa. And I, that just makes for a well, and he is. he is. I mean, that, that was profoundly manifested in their results. Joseph sees things and looks at things through a different lens. You don't want, once you start getting more than two or three people around an office, you don't want everybody the same. Right. Because, you know, then they're all going to go, okay, that makes sense. When I know for a fact that, you know, I can say something and I think it's right on. And, and Joseph turns around and goes, no, I see that from a totally different point of view. And I go, you know, he's right. And I'm sure that happens to you all the yeah. time. Well, y'all tell my wife, sometimes I'm right. Will someone send Lauren Puckett? Look, email? I'm not saying I'm ever wrong. I'm just saying sometimes <laughs> Joseph has a different way to look at it. <laughs> perspective, right? It's, and honestly, what makes people tick? That's you, know, right. you might be banging your head against your table sometimes thinking, why aren't they motivated? I put all these thousands of dollars on the table, but maybe that's not what drives them. Maybe they need more attaboys or girls or more empathy or more connection with you. Maybe they want more input. Maybe they want more output. Maybe they want to be a part of the program instead of just being told what to do. That's what this thing does. That's, that's really that's, cool. That's such a good point because yeah. we have like one of our people, one of our leaders, um, he didn't care as much about the financial rewards as the quality of work. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And it came through in the index. So how do you think we deal with that? So when we're working mm -hmm. with him, 
what do you think we give attaboys over? It's about the quality of work that his team is doing and what he's responsible for. And he appreciates that more than a $500 bonus. And, it, and it's true. It's real. And he's been with me for a long time. So I know that. And this just really brought that out. So when we put him into this role, it was really easy to, to make that work. So it's little things like that. There's so many times where, like Joseph said, you get frustrated trying to incentivize people or trying to motivate people to get where you want to go, but you don't really know what makes them click and what they're going to respond to or what frustrates them. And then when you're able to put all that together, it's just amazing what you can pull out of that. Uh, and I'm that way. I mean, what you're describing with him is the way I am, which is long term in my life and my, and my judgment type is like this. I am much more interested in the effect that I have on people, on the quality of what's going on. I, I like money, but you can't wave money in front of me and make me right. want to go. Right. I want to change people's lives. And that's one of the attractions to working with, with Craig Wiggins coaching is it's about changing lives. Mm -hmm. uh, Linda asked, I would love to see this video again. How soon can I see it again? I'll have the recording on the mm -hmm. CWC on demand platform, probably about tomorrow afternoon. I just have to process it, upload it and stuff. So Linda, I'll get that on there. And I may add this to the website too, if you think it'd be helpful just to have it on the website for people to be able to see. Sure. Uh, what is the promo code? Mark, there's not a promo code. It's just if you're a member, choose the CWC one for only 59 bucks a month. If you're not a member, it's 99 bucks a month. Uh, Gina asked, I'm sorry if I missed this. Is there a month to month fee or is there a contract? No contracts. No contracts or commitments. We want this to be for your agency. If it's not, cancel it. But, you know, we just want this to be a great resourceful tool for you to use. Uh, Mark says, so you used 100 LSPs across the country. Is that a large enough sample size? We used 100 of the best LSPs from all across the country and some of the ones that weren't doing so well mm -hmm. at those agencies. We had a mix from about 25 different agencies. Our own people did it, and then we ranked them from one to four, one being the best, four being the worst, sent all that data to them, and they fine-tuned and tweaked all of this because, honestly, some of our best people – you know, came out kind of interesting in terms of the reports. It was very interesting. So they fine tuned and tweaked it because this job is very different than working at Chick-fil-A, for example, being a cashier at Chick-fil-A or, or being a football player for Coach Saban, right? So they customize this. I think that's a pretty good sample size, but as Charles said earlier, they're going to be continually fine tuning and tweaking based on all the data that comes in. This is going to be kind of a living, breathing thing. Yeah, so your feedback is really <clears throat> important as you go forward with this. You need, you need to let us know and continue to get yeah, it because we can tweak it. Um, so, yeah, would it be better to have, you know, thousands? Absolutely. Well, um, but it gave us a really good start, and it was amazing how accurate it was. Well, and, and it's based on more than a million folks out there that, that have done this uh, assessment that we have in a database. And then we took it and, and screened it down to picking out, like Joseph said, these top performers – and, but we also had some people in there that were not top performers so that we could mm -hmm. see a difference. And the way we set it up is it, it, it's not a narrow gate. It, it's, it's a wide gate. And, you know, the people you're getting, you, if it indicates that they have bad judgment, they have bad judgment. A um, couple more quick questions, and Luis, I'm really glad that you sent this to me via chat. Thinking of another tool that many – agencies have access to or have bought into we we need to know if a candidate is a salesperson or closer or a nurturer how does a judgment index tell me if they're made for a particular position and here's how i'll answer that louis um about three years ago was the last time we ever used that system and i'll just be blunt about it why because we realized we were having century club level agents that were nurturers <laughs> nurturers beth lambrick is a perfectionist on another type of scale. Uh, we've had others that were nurturers, networkers, etc. What does that mean? We didn't find a correlation with personality matching the actual results. What matters is what drove them. Exactly. What motivated them, how we worked with them, the opportunity that we gave them. So personality, I mean, I think you've said this before. I don't know if we said it on this call, but you can go on death row and find every type of personality, <laughs> right? You can look at all the Fortune 500 companies and find every different type of personality. Here in this agency, there's probably 10 or 15 different personalities in, in this roof. But finding what makes them tick and develop them. So honestly, 
That's why we haven't been using assessments was because Taylor, Taylor Reed is three doors down this hallway. She scored knowledgeable. And I was like, darn it, darn it. I really wanted to hire Taylor. I passed. Thank God she followed up with me two days later. She sent me, she called me, called me at the agency. You think I took that call? No way. I'm busy. I didn't take that call. She's knowledgeable. So I, I let it go. She sent me an email. Did I return that email? <laughs> Charles, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I did not return her email, guys. This is about three and a half years ago. Thankfully, the next week, she called me again. I said, you're nothing but persistent. I made her drive two hours back up here. She lived two hours south at a university town. I made her drive two more hours back up here, and I told her to her face that she didn't pass her assessment. Told that to her face, but that I was going to give her a shot. She wrote 54 items in her first month, 70-something in her second month, was in the Century Club, which for those of you who don't know is 100 items a month, by like the fifth or sixth month. Hasn't looked back since. That's the last person we put through a personality. Yeah, last year she wrote 208 items in one month. Yeah. And this oh, was somebody so who she's knowledgeable. We weren't supposed <laughs> to hire. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to knock any yeah. other. I'm, I'm just sure. saying that fundamentally when you look at those, and we did them for years, like consistently, and the bad thing about it is all the people that we didn't even follow up with because they came back a certain yeah. personality, the people that we probably passed on, or had we been doing this, we would have had much better insight as to whether they're going to be coachable and have the drive and the judgment and things necessary that are really going to make a difference when they come in. So, um, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of those, and, and for good reason, just based off prior experience. Uh, a couple of people have signed up and are asking me questions. Do I need to fill out the information? Yes, please. When you get the email confirmation, it asks for like your agent number, your email address, your physical address. We have to pass that on to the index team so they can create your portal. So yeah, I know we have a lot of that information, but it'll just be a more seamless process yeah. if we'll just reply back with that right. real quick. Uh, Mark and Monica and Aaron, welcome. Welcome, you guys. Um, have we applied to be approved by Blueprint or other carrier things? No. No. No, and we, and we won't be. We, we like to stay independent. We, we like to stay separate just so we can, uh, you know, do it the way that we want to do it. So we're, we won't be going down that road. A um, couple more quick questions. Um, let's see here. Have you found anyone that scored a low problem-solving skill level that worked out? We did not have anybody that scored in the weak category. We had some moderates. Moderates. And again, that's why it's moderate. If they're in the weak category on this index, that's a bit of a heads up. Um, can this program link with an Indeed slash existing job post? Paul, what I would say is you're going to get your own URL and your own PIN code um, that you can use for the CWC coaching index. So what you could incorporate is as someone reply, applies, you can incorporate in your reply, your automated reply to say, hey, we received your application. Thank you so much as a part mm -hmm. of our process. We'd like for you to complete this 10 minute profile, whatever, however you wanna phrase it, include your link, use your PIN code. So you get unlimited assessments. Mm -hmm. There's no charge, whether you use 10 a month or 100 a month, it's all just 59 bucks a month for members or 99 if you're not. So Paul, that may be, might be a way to somewhat automate it mm -hmm. by including it in like the confirmation of the application to have them click it. Um, is this a replacement for companies, Todd asks, for other companies like Ideal Traits or other assessments, or is this to be used as a supplement? You know, for me, I'll just answer that question. Personality tells me nothing about someone's ability to be successful. So for me, it would be a replacement. But I could see how some might want to know personality and maybe you're using Myers-Briggs or something like that. That's fine. Um, but for, just for me, personality, that I can go, we have seven agents in this room. They're going to write about 600 items this month, just in this building. I bet we have seven different personalities. Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't <laughs> surprise me one bit. Um, besides the actual assessments, is there other coaching webinars, Byron? Great question. So at craigwigginscoaching.com slash CWC index, Byron, there's like 30 videos that explain how to interpret the results, what the 13 judgment types mean. Uh, so Byron, Shane says done. All right, welcome, Shane. Um, so Byron, you might want to check out those videos before you enroll to take a look more in terms of what it is. We laid it all out there. All 13 judgment types are there all 30 training videos on how to interpret it are there. So take a look at that, Byron, and let me know if you have any questions. Also, he'll be involved in monthly webinars. Yes, we'll, yes. I'll be Talk here. a lot more about this. And, and one of the things I encourage people to do is have somebody take it, look at it. You're going to have questions. Go find the video. It'll be very, very clear 
what the video is because it's titled whatever that scale is listen to it it will explain it and and you have it in written form you have it in verbal form obviously you know the thrill of me talking about it is a lot better than just reading it but, um, yeah so there's a lot of support there for you so I've had a couple people ask again what's the link so craigwigginscoaching.com slash CWC index at the top of craigwigginscoaching.com is there's links like for our event. Mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody coming to Vegas in two weeks. Yep. Who's ready for Vegas? Awesome. Um, so up at the top, it also is linked to the menu, CWC Coaching Index. Um, uh, Liz, yeah, I'll have the recording later. Let's see here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ha um, okay, can't wait to meet. Yeah, can't wait to see you, Alexis, in <laughs> Vegas. I'm really excited <laughs> about Vegas. Um, last question, Liz asked, address how to find out if the person is actually going to be coachable, regardless of the personality or judgment. So as you're looking through that, that assessment, what are some key triggers that might say, you know, I think that's, that's they don't all have to be preferred. No. Right? No. There could be some moderates and things. So, you know, maybe for Liz, you know, what would be some good trigger points for her to look for? Well, obviously, you want to look at the general judgment area and, and be able to see that they have generally good judgment. If you'll get into that coachability section and that drive section, mm -hmm. you put those two things together with reliability. I mean, all of a sudden, that's why we called it a coaching index. <laughs> Every one of our, our, our categories relate to coachability. But if, they, if they're coachable, they have that noticing capacity and that uh, energy to learn, and then you go down and look at drive, and that if it's up in the moderate range, they're going to be reasonably coachable you get preferred they're probably a little more coachable may have a little more energy may have a little more drive we have found so many times that you don't have to have the most perfect judgment to be great this does not account for IQ it does not account for experience somebody could be going through a life crisis and suddenly be a single parent with kids they are very very driven and so you could, you could look at that and go, well, I got somebody that's got some moderates in here. That is not a, that's not a deal breaker. That might actually be a very positive thing. But if it gets over, if you get multiple scales over in the week section, that should be an eye opener to you. One isn't going to bother me. Two may not bother me. I start getting three or four in the week section. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really wondering just, just how coachable they are. Mm -hmm. One last question is that Stephen squeaked it in, and I think this could be a good topic for a webinar. Options for current individuals in leadership positions that test weak. So maybe how to move them Exactly. Up. We have protocols. <clears throat> I, I literally can, can sit there and coach you and go, if you've got this scale, this is what we need to do. I'll give you a heads up on this. It can be as simple as mentoring. If you have somebody in the office that scores great on noticing capacity or on energy to learn, and you have somebody who's lower in that area, I can help you direct how to do that. But, but that is one of the most positive things and uh, brings about the most change is mentoring. Yeah, and just something that I might add, it changes, right? People evolve in my eight and a half years with Craig, I've changed a lot, mm -hmm. right? A lot. Um, so the, what it all comes down to is knowing how to work with them, how to coach them up, to leverage what drives them and to watch those pain points. Yeah, exactly. I think that's so insightful the, to know like what's going to irk them if you're really hitting those pain points. So guys, we've gone a bit over time. I want to thank you so much before I pass it to Craig to wrap up. Thank you guys so much for attending this. Um, check out craigwigginscoaching.com slash CWC index. You'll learn everything that you need to know. But if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Yeah, thanks so much for being on the call. I really appreciate you, Charles. Thank Definitely. you for being a part of our team. Um, I think this is going to be a tool that's going to be a game changer for a lot of people. If you're trying to take your leadership skills to the next level and figure out how you interact with your people and you know, get them to get their full potential every day, um, I think this can help you a lot. So thanks so much for being on the webinar today. We will talk a lot more about this. Uh, monthly with Charles Absolutely. and uh, look forward to seeing all you guys in Vegas in a few weeks. It's going to be a, a great event and uh, can't wait to see you then. <laughs>